So, last night I made a video about my drug addiction. And um, this isn't something I really wanted to talk about. You know, I thought I've been thinking about it a long time. Going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of negative shit to say. And honestly, I'm going to let you all know something. You could say whatever you want to say. It's not going to be worse than anything I've said to myself. So, have at it, really. Um, let's see. Let's start with, I've got five years sober now. Feeling really great about where I am in my recovery. Um, feeling even better about where I'm at in life. And those are great things. Uh, feels good that the only worry I have is like, did I take out the trash last night? Because I really don't want my house to stink when I wake up. I have a thing with smells. I, just, I don't like stinky shit. Um, so that's great. Those are great things. But then we can get deeper because um, <laughs> my addiction stole a lot from me in life. It's amazing I'm alive. It's even more amazing that I'm sober, right? Because most women that are drug addicts, you'll hear them. I got sober for my kids. I would never lose my kids because of my drug addiction. Just like I would never become a heroin addict, right? It cost me my career. I was a caregiver for years. I caught a felony. Criminal mistreatment the first. When you read about it, it says I abuse old people and children. I don't. Never have. Um, caregiving. It was my career. It was everything to me. I loved it. I was so good at it. The state found out I was pending a felony. I hadn't even been officially charged. The state of Oregon can't have that shit pending. So they let me go. Um, I was a level two technician is what they call it in the state caregiving field. Oh, man. That was hard. It was a really hard one for me. I spent 10 years caregiving. I put everything into it. Um, so it started. Let's, let's go back to where it started before I even have had kids. I have endometriosis. So see, I can never speak. This is going to be a thing you guys are going to see. My mouth doesn't work. I had endometriosis and polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's really painful. Shit does suck. It wasn't what I made it out to be because I, I like the pain pills. Started with Vicodin. Told them the Vicodin didn't work. Moved me to Percocet. Told them the Percocet made my face itch. Gave me Oxycontin. I was getting um, 115, 15 milligram Oxycontin a month. One day I went in and went to pick up my script as usual, like I always do once a month. There was a new doctor and they wanted to meet me instead of just handing me my script across the table. So I met them and they asked for a UA. And I puffed big reefers. I always have, ever since I was a little kid. Like honestly, like 10. Um, come from a hard family. So... <sighs> They thought that I wasn't going to have the Oxycontin in my system. A lot of people were selling their Oxycontin at the time. I liked Oxycontin, so of course it was in my system, but the weed was also in my system. So they gave me 30 5 milligram Oxycontins and told me to wean myself off of my dosage, which was huge. Which was far beyond what I was even being prescribed, you know? So, and I also wasn't at that point anymore eating oxys, right? Like, I was smoking them. So, um, 
got pregnant with my my daughter. Quit everything, dude. I, I fucking didn't understand the danger of that. But it went well. Gracie came out perfect. Nines and tens on her app car score. She was... She was awesome. The kid was awesome. Best baby ever. Um, her dad and I were high school sweethearts. Uh, huh. And he loved drugs. He came from a really good family. Great people. Uh, I could tell you. I, I wanted to quit doing drugs. Tried. Tried a lot. Michael would bring them back. He even went to Texas as um, working for the military. He got moved to Fort Hood. My family and I were supposed to move up there. And I'm in Denver on a layover. And he tells me he actually didn't have a house for me. And pulled my kid out of school. My son was a baby. That was a fucking nightmare. I get up there and I've been clean and sober for about a month. And he has an eight ball of meth and a fucking quarter piece of heroin. used as soon as I got off the plane. <sighs> Back in the cycle again. I knew I shouldn't have went. I knew I shouldn't have went and I did it anyway. I knew I should have stopped the marriage right then and I went longer. You know, another couple years. Ended up losing the kids. Um, his family, his mom's best friend, ended up adopting them. It wasn't an official adoption. The whole thing was really shady, actually. That's a whole nother story. That'll take forever to tell. Michael went to prison. He ended up going off the rails when I left him and hard on the meth. Became a dirty dirtbag thief. Started stealing from everyone and went to prison for four years. Um, he messaged, not messaged, called me all the time. Don't even know how that fool would find my number in prison, you know. Um, probably one of my family members gave it to him. And he would call me and, can we work this out? And at this point, we've been apart for years. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Are you still doing drugs? Get off the fucking meth. Quit messing around, fool. So, Michael got out of prison. But little did I know, before he got out, he started having this virtual affair with the woman who had my kids. And, um, he got out of prison. The woman, Shannon, and her husband, Adam, got a divorce. So my kids went through my divorce with my husband and I. They went through the divorce with Shannon and her husband. Only for Shannon to move their biological father in the house and start a relationship with him. And I'm the bad guy for being a heroin addict, you know. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. It's a hard one to have no control. And that's the hardest thing I've learned as a drug addict is we have no control. And I think that's part of doing drugs. It was easy. It was the first thing I can control in a minute. It was just my thing. Uh, and as you get sober, you start to realize those things, like all the fucked up things. And here we are five years later. And I miss those fucking kids. They used to let me see them. And even though I'm sober, <laughs> I don't get to. Uh, I try looking for them on Facebook and shit. Messaging any person with the name of my children hoping that one day I'll get a message back she's old now she's 16 I saw a picture of her in a dress like going to a school dance god she's a stunner that little girl my son is so handsome rides dirt bikes Gracie rides horses they're prodigies on what they do I hate people that cry on here Hold it together. Uh, it's my fault. I made the choices I made and I have to accept those things. But uh, it never makes it easier. I think as a mom, when you really love your kids, it sucks. 
And I've met women as addicts that just have kids and keep giving them away. They have no emotional attachment to that little human being that they created. And it's like, I think that was the hardest thing that the addiction took. Obviously took my career. That was shitty. Got a new one. Um, took a lot of relationships. It's all right. Didn't need those people anyway. I gained a couple relationships throughout my addiction that I still have, but probably wouldn't be here without. So, um, I thank God that I never shot heroin, that I only smoked it. I probably would be dead. That's fuck for sure. But, I let my addiction steal the one thing God gave me. It was it. He said, Tiffany, here, this is for you. These, ooh, these little people, you take care of them, you protect them. And I can't. Because the shitty choices that I made and I guess I only hope one day through my sobriety and staying sober. And it's the only thing that keeps me sober, really. Um, is knowing one day they'll come back around and they'll see what they've heard isn't true. It wasn't true. Maybe I'll get to be a part of my grandchildren's life. Addiction steals a lot. Sometimes it steals shit that you'll never... You can't fix it. And then you gotta learn how to cope with the fact that you fucked it up that bad. This is where I say, addiction comes with a lot of self-hatred. Some of it is well-deserved. <laughs> Oh, dude. We just learn how to cope. We learn more coping skills to deal with each situation as it comes. I wasn't a good wife to my ex-husband. He got me back real good. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Like, you can't imagine. About three months before he got out of prison, he calls me and tells me he has a plan to get our family back. Like, He's got some mental issues. I don't know if he understands. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways. Um, I fucked up. So if anything, this video is just an example of... If you're just starting using heroin, you got kids... Stop, dude. It's it's hard. It's very hard. But you know what? One of the things that made me get sober, like really get sober, I sat there one day and I was um, like I used to quiet down all the thoughts, you know. The heroin would do that. It would just shut everything off for a while. And all those thoughts about what I'm missing and how I fucked up. And I would just stop. And the world would be quiet for a little bit. And in some aspects, I say, if I didn't do heroin, I wouldn't be alive today. Because there are certain days that heroin was the only thing that kept me alive. I just needed a few minutes for the brain to stop. Because sometimes your brain is too much for you to handle. With that said, one day I used and all those same thoughts happened. It didn't quiet it anymore. So here I am and I'm still thinking about all those things I don't want to think about. Only I'm high as shit. <laughs> I'm not out and wake back up and think about that. And I cry. 
it smokes more. I mean, and it hit me that day. It's hard to say. When my children got taken, they didn't get to use any drug to escape from that from that pain that I put them through. So I thought how unfair of me to just sit here in the state of mind blocking everything out that I created. I created, they didn't create that mess. I did. And they're the ones that are feeling it because I'm not. Because I was getting high as shit. And uh, it's that day. So I didn't have anything keeping me sober. Like, my kids were gone already. <laughs> um, so it was me. It was me. I decided it's time. It's time to do it right. Here we are five years later. And shit still hurts. It hurts like it like it just happened yesterday. It still hurts. Um I don't know if those feelings will ever go away. Parts of myself I haven't figured out how to heal. But I'm in a really good place because even with all that. I don't want to get high anymore. And that feels good. It's running a dope isn't a coping skill I have anymore. It's that one thing that I learned. I gotta let go of it, right? So I let go. And that was really hard. But I take... Three of these a day. In combination with edibles. And a lot of smoking pot. I I managed to stay off heroin for years. And that's an accomplishment for me. A lot of people don't believe in the medicated assisted treatment. Or they'll say you're still using that shit. You're not clean and... I'm clean. I'm not fucking smoking heroin. I'm not polluting my body with poison. I'm not out running the street, selling dope, dancing, and acting a damn fool. So, uh, people say what you want. Medicated assisted treatment. It's the only way I was able to get off heroin. I tried detoxing. You have no idea how many times I've tried stopping by myself, but the pain of, I don't like to feel pain. I am sorry. If there's another option, I'm going to take it. It's a safe option. I'm not going to have a heart attack because of the stress I'm putting my body through. The older you get, the harder that shit is for sure. I guess I just hope that if anything, people are going to see this and it's going to help them a little bit. You guys can get sober. You guys could stay sober. It's just, a, you got to want it. That's the, the truest thing I've ever heard. Therapy. therapy helps. It all sounds so stupid and easy. Maybe it is that stupid and that easy. We all just fail to realize it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why it took me so long. I don't know. I got a lot of stories to tell. So many. I lived quite a life. I really can't wait to share them with people if it's going to help. These guys help. Especially him.
He knows when I'm sad. My other dog runs away when I cry. Oh, yeah. Dogs helped. Dogs. <laughs> I've had a few dogs since my kids. My husband has kids. They come around. And it's a whole nother story. It's hard to adjust to. I want to love those kids. They're great kids. They're amazing kids. They're not mine. I don't know. I'm pretty fucked up, and I'm still working on it. But we'll get there. And all I could hope for is, what, five years down the road, I own my own home. I got an amazing manager. Owner of the business, I guess, because I'm the manager. So that man gave me a chance with my felony and everything else. And I love what I do. It's the first job since caregiving that's rewarding. I'm finally in a place in life that I just feel good. And um, there's a few things missing that are never going to make me feel right. Like There's a few parts of my life that are going to be left kind of empty. And empty spots in people are dangerous. So we need to figure out what to do with that. Um, but I don't ever get scared I'm going to use anymore. So that's, like, that's, I don't know. I've never felt that before. And when I thought about making this video, that's what I thought about. That I think, even though I'm terrified to put this out here because... I don't ever like to present myself as a drug addict. I'll always be a drug addict. I know that. A little piece of me is always going to be that broken child. <laughs> but I don't have to let that shit define me anymore. And I'm cool with that. It's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I finally thought my story may help somebody. And if it just helps one person decide that it's time to get fucking clean and become the person they were meant to be, I would honestly make my world. I've only ever wanted to help people. I only ever end up fucking that shit up. So, um... Like and subscribe if you do want to hear more. Tell me what you want to know. I'll tell you about it.